Dear friends, dear sisters and brothers in Christ, welcome to Congregation of God's People on this second Sunday after the Epiphany and also the Sunday we mark Martin Luther King Sunday. And uh, welcome to Rutgers Presbyterian Church, Church of Open Commensality, which means that our embrace, our welcome is open to everyone regardless of your gender, orientation, race, age, or any other human distinction. You are welcome here. Welcome to the handful faithful uh, Presbyterians here with us and also to those who are with us online. I see many famous faces. Uh, and we will have our lay reader from Kansas today. So there'll be uh, Doug Fischel, uh, who will be our lay reader today. We are still testing new system. Uh, we are trying to use it to, for different aspects as well. So be patient with us uh, as we are trying to uh, make sure that we have all the moving parts together. Um, and having said so, I welcome you now to our service with the uh, apostolic greeting. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And now please join me and liturgist in our call to worship. Come to this place of welcome and worship. You are welcome here. And you are welcome here. You are welcome here. You are welcome here. Let us worship together.
Please be seated. For our prayer of renunciation and acceptance. We renounce falsehood, lies, deceitful words, and actions. We take. We renounce anger that leads to harm with words and actions. We take up words and actions that heal, create peace. We renounce egotism, selfish grasping, and ravaging our planet. We take up honest work, caring for others and the creation. We renounce racism nativism, and dividing people into us and them. We take up divine love, which embraces all people. We renounce insults, slander, and evil judgment of others. We take up loving courages, comforts, and offers hope. We renounce bitterness, revenge, and the desire to cause harm. We take up kindness, tenderheartedness, and forgiveness. And now, dear friends, if you are able, please stand up for the words of assurance. Hello, everyone. May God bless you, take care of you, and give all of us peace. This is the words of assurance. God hears all earnest prayers and grant you with divine peace. Amen. Amen. In this season of Epiphany, we are awakened to the power of Jesus Christ. And so I invite you to claim this power, preeminent among Jesus' power is his gift of peace. May peace be with you this day and always. And I invite you to give a sign of peace to one another. With you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, everybody. Peace be with you. From mild, sunny Kansas. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, everybody. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And it's time for children message. And I don't see any children here in the sanctuary. And I don't see myself on a monitor either. What did happen? But it really does not matter. I hope that people in at home, they see us. And uh, uh, that was most likely because last Sunday we had here all the children for their play, 
and so they synchronize themselves, and there are therefore none of them here today, <laughs> which is all right. Uh, but we have for them, as we suggested, these lovely pillows. We have many pillows, so I can now really kind of take it easy and sit on many pillows. Now, I want to talk to you about some very, very old word. The word as old as we can read, almost. And that word is actually, interestingly, quite an abstract concept. And that abstract concept is a word for peace. It goes, I have it here written in all different scripts. And I think that, Peter, can you put it on the screen for those? Yes. That was originally prepared for children here on a paper, while on a screen it is for everyone else. It's a word in Semitic language, uh, which in Hebrew is shalom, or shalama. Here you have it in Latin script. And in some languages, it is salama, salama. Simply, some languages had lisp would pronounce it sh, and some other as s. But it goes as back as we can read anything in Akkadian language in cuneiform. I have here the Ugaritic one, which is written with a stylus on clay tablets. And I have there also Ethiopian script, which is also Semitic language, and it is also in Maltese language. That's that small uh, island in the center of Mediterranean Sea. There is Malta, and Malta has Semitic language also, and they would understand you if you say Shalom or Salam, because that's their language as well. And of course, Hebrew, Aramaic, and Arabic. And you see, it is as old as we can read. But it is more than just what we today understand as peace. Because today, peace simply means that we don't have a war. But peace back then understood, was understood as well-being, wholeness, health, almost. And that was their way of understanding of peace. I think that we can take it down, that picture. Because now we will be learning, we will be learning how to greet one another in Hebrew and in Arabic. And so in Hebrew, it goes like this. Shalom Aleichem. Aleichem. Shalom Aleichem. Follow, follow me after me. Shalom Aleichem. Perfect. And the answer is the Aleichem Shalom. The Aleichem Shalom. It's simply flipping those words. It actually means peace be above you or descend on you. And then it is and descend on you, peace. So that is that uh, exchange. So Shalom Aleichem. Va'alechem shalom. Now, we will try to do it properly. I'll say the greeting and you will respond. Okay? Shalom alechem. Va'alechem shalom. Now, believe it or not, Arabic is almost the same thing with the difference of sh and s. So it goes like this. As salam alaikum. As salam alaikum. Can you hear it in it? As salam alaikum, shalom alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Wa alaikum salam is the uh, as salam is the response. So as salam alaikum. As salam alaikum. 
Va alaikum salam. Va alaikum salam. Perfect. We are now, we wished upon each other now many, many times peace. So peace be with you and peace may be on those people who can almost or almost certainly can understand one another and are like feuding brothers or cousins. So let us pray for peace now. Gracious Lord, we pray for peace around the world. And today, as we learn the greeting of peace in Hebrew and Arabic, we pray for peace among those people. Amen. And Today's scripture lesson comes from the Hebrew scriptures from the prophet Isaiah chapter 1 verses 12 to 18. Thus says the Lord through the prophet Isaiah, when you come to appear before me, who ask you to trample my courts? 
Stop bringing me your futile offerings. Incense is an abomination to me. New moon and Sabbath and called meetings, I cannot stand solemn assemblies with iniquity. My soul hates your new moons and your appointed festivals. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of them. When you stretch out your hands, I hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not listen, because your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Remove the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rescue the oppressed. Defend the orphan. Plead for the widow. Come now. Let us argue it out, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be like snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. Thus ends the reading of the scripture for today. Thanks be to God. Can you see me? I was actually told that uh, if I have the lectern here, that people in pews cannot see me. So I'm just making sure that I see everyone in the sanctuary. Hopefully I see everyone uh, online as well. Uh, so uh, that's great. Um, for today, for this sermon, I picked for us this reading from Isaiah as an illustrative reading. And it was also picked for the uh, ecumenical uh, week of prayers, which is just finished and was uh, selected uh, here in America to address our racial conflicts and was shared around the world. I heard about it from my contacts in Czech Republic. But for my sermon today, I picked just one verse from Jeremiah 6, 14. And in New Revised Standard Version, we read, they have treated the wound of my people carelessly, saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. But friends, that is not what the prophet said and what he meant. That is pathetically dull and toothless translation. We've already talked with children about shalom, uh, and it, of course, is indeed a peace. But more, much more than that, it is a concept of harmony, wholeness, deep healing. And Hebrew shever is not just any wound, any bruise, any scratch or cut, superficial or even deep. Shever is a crushing wound. It is a bleeding open fracture with jagged bones sticking out. I'm sorry for this expressionistic allusions. But that is the meaning, honest and uncensored. So I will render Jeremiah protest like this. They treat the crushing wound of my people by blowing at it. Hush, hush, baby, don't you cry. But that wound and pain can't be simply blown away. This weekend, 
we celebrate Martin Luther King Jr. And I know how long and difficult and arduous, even grueling process it was to have this federal holiday established and recognized. It took literally decades and decades and many attempts. This holiday has been nationwide celebrated as late as 2000. It was established against sustained opposition and deep-rooted racist resentment. And it is an important and precious American holiday. But dear friends, as precious holiday as it is, and mentioning how long it took to celebrate it, friends, it is celebrated on a wrong day. I know it is observed on the third Monday of January each year in close proximity to Martin Luther King's birthday. He was born on this day, actually. This year it is this day, 15 of January, 1929. We celebrate remarkable people on their birthdays, and Martin Luther King was a remarkable man. He spent just 13 years in public eye. He wrote five books, delivered countless famous speeches, led earth-shaking and society-changing protests and marches while being arrested two dozens of times, survived several assassination attempts, one being his home bombed in Alabama, another time being stopped, stabbed here in New York City, and finally was silenced, shot dead, aged just only 39. Martin Luther King was murdered for his ideas, for his ideals, for what he stood for, for civil rights, racial equality, social and racial justice. At the end of his life, he led campaign for the poor, and he strived for it in a nonviolent and peaceful way. Under threats, he did not break and did not back down, and so he died. He sacrificed his life for these high ideals, for his beliefs, for justice, for his people. Martin Luther King is a real, modern, American martyr. And that is the problem, great problem with Martin Luther King Day. Because he is a real, modern, American martyr. Martyrs are not and should not be remembered on their birthdays. Saint Stephen has day on 26th of December. For church, it was somehow inconveniently close to Christmas. Nonetheless, Saint Stephen, first Christian martyr, known from Acts of Apostles, is celebrated or remembered on the December 26th, not on his birthday at the time he lost his life. Jan Hus, Czech reformer, reformer of my tradition, is remembered on the 6th of July when he was burned on stake by the Council of Constance as a heretic. He became, or was, and then became even more a reformer of the Czechs 100 years before Martin Luther King, Mar Martin Luther. Then John of Arc, 
When is she remembered? On her birthday? No. On the 30th of May. Maximilian Kolbe, that priest who sacrificed his life by changing the place with a family in Auschwitz. His saint's day is August 14. It's not his birthday. It's the day when he went to gas chamber. Dietrich Bonhoeffer is not remembered on his birthday, but on the 9th of April. That's the day when we remember him murdered at the end of that Second World War. And Bishop Oscar Romero, his day is 24th of March, when he was gunned down at the altar. Great people are remembered on their birthdays, and that's absolutely fine. But those who gave up their lives for their beliefs and for others who follow them are remembered on the days of their martyrdoms. That is the problem with the Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King Day in January. Friends, without saying it, it takes a day his martyr's crown. It pretends to celebrate him while neglecting, negating his sacrifice. Like with Isaiah going through the motions but missing the main point. Like with Jeremiah treating the crushing wound of my people by trying to blow the pain away. But that wound and its pain can't be simply blown away. And here I will ask for that picture on a screen for a moment. It is actually in your bulletins, but this is for those who are at home. The first civil rights and social justice activists knew that, what I just talked about. And on the first anniversary, and up until now, there have been attempts to remember Martin Luther King on the day of his martyrdom. I think that that's enough for the illustration. But there is another reason why it is sinisterly wrong date to remember Martin Luther King. I did some research and across the American and North American continent, this is, friends, in average, coldest weekend of the year. I do not know whether it was intention or just coincidence or maybe a bit of both. But on the third Monday in January, it is awfully difficult to lead city marches or any protests. Over the years, I attended a number of those brave events. I remember one particular, about five or six years ago, a hub, huddle of Upper West Side clergy and a few activists led by Reverend Bob Brashear, bless his heart bravely pushed forward through the windy and single-digit temperatures from church to church, literally preaching to their choirs. And so, yes, against the great racist opposition, there is now a holiday to remember Martin Luther King but it is on the day which diminishes his sacrifice, his martyrdom, and on the day when it is almost impossible
to follow his example and take to the streets for nonviolent protests and civil actions. And even the well-intended attempts to make this holiday into a day of service is not easily done in mid-January. It is broken down into small venues, most often inside. And so we go through motions, we remember, we celebrate, but not as Martin Luther King would have done so. When I hear or read about our American prisons filled disproportionately, even grotesquely, with black men, when I go home and encounter our many Broadway homeless, predominantly black, or big black man on a bench in the Riverside Park, a shirtless beggar stumbling through the car of subway, or an elderly man in hospital scrubs given to him by nurses and still with that hospital bracelet warning about his diabetes and danger of falls, but clearly homeless. I hear Prophet Jeremiah. Peace, peace, what peace? I do not have any easy and instant solutions, but I know that our society still carries serious wound, serious injury. And I hear from the prophets that God desires and longs for healing and makes us accountable. Maybe it starts with actually acknowledging what is the situation. We need to start with prophetic diagnosis that the broken fracture or slavery and racism even though it is in the past, yes, that broken bones and jagged bones poking through the skin and bleeding, that happened a long time ago. It's still happening, especially if people are being jolted around and pushed and so on. But this crushing injury cannot be healed just with bandages and blowing the pain away. So remember the Martin Luther King on his day. Yes, he was born today. If you wish, celebrate it. But don't forget that its proper date has always been April 4th. And if you can, Join any and all racial and social justice, nonviolent protests and events throughout the year, especially after the last few years, we became painfully aware that our society is still gravely wounded. And so, encouraged by prophets, let us Seek the real, true, deep healing, the memory of Martin Luther King deserves that. And now please standing, if you are able, join me in affirmation of faith. It is taken from the Confession of Belhar. We believe that God brings justice to the oppressed and gives bread to the hungry. God frees the prisoner and restores sight to the blind. God supports the downtrodden, protects the stranger, 
helps orphans and widows, and blocks the path of ungodly, we believe that God calls us, the Church, to follow his divine example. If you would like to make a contribution to Rutgers Presbyterian Church, please consider mailing in a check to the church office. Or if you prefer to pay online, please consult the instructions found in our weekly emails or a PDF of the bulletin. If you are worshiping in the sanctuary, there is a box in the narthex. today, we want to bring more than our money. 
Give us hearts to hear the cries of need. Help us speak out against injustice. May we offer all we can to all your creation. Amen. Now, uh, for a few announcements. Uh, so, uh, on, church, uh, on Monday, church will be closed. On Tuesday, we have resistance bureau at 6 o'clock. On Thursday, at 4 o'clock, we used to have Bible class. Uh, we are looking for a new uh, time for our meetings. Uh, so, if you want to join us and they're unable, for instance, on Thursday at 4 o'clock, uh, just contact the church office and ask for a survey uh, where you will be able to mark when you can come and we will try to find a time for us, uh, for our Bible class. At six o'clock uh, on Thursday, there is a night meal uh, here at Rutgers. Saturday, next Saturday, will be our youth group sleepover and on Sunday, uh, we have at 9.30 choir rehearsal uh, and Sunday school and a worship at 11 o'clock. Highlighting also that session is calling our annual congregational meeting for the January 29th. The last Sunday in January, as always, will be also our annual congregational meeting in person and on Zoom. And now let us gather up the joys and concerns of this congregation and of the world. Let me start with the choir. Yes. Uh, my mother, after having beaten cancer about three years ago in her colon, um, at a routine checkup a couple weeks ago, it was discovered she had fairly severe and advanced cancer in her liver. So she's going through probably about half a year to a year of severe chemo, and we have no idea what the prognosis is right now. So just a prayer for strength and for some enlightenment in this particularly rough situation. Lord, in your mercy. Prayers. Prayers. Yes. So sorry. Um, just wanted to ask for prayers as well for my cousin who had a stroke just the other day and is in the ICU. Just prayers for his recovery and strength. Lord, in your mercy. And now from the congregation. I'd like to thank you for your prayers. I had a very successful operation and I walked here today and I'm very happy about that. And I'd also then like to raise up a good friend, Denise. Um, she had a miraculous <laughs> recovery, but I think still needs medical attention. And so we wanna make sure the doctors see her and figure out what may need to be figured out. Lord, in your mercy and in thanksgiving, hear our prayers. Um, my mother, <clears throat> sorry, my mother uh, got a symptom now of her macular degeneration and is being treated and it should be okay, but uh, you know, her sight is going. Anyway, so I just wanted to uh, say that, you know, to pray for her as well. Lord, in your mercy. I would like to thank uh, Rutgers Church for sending food to, to my house on the death of my wife. Thank you very much. Lord, in thanksgiving. And so let us continue. Oh God, for places of war and violence, Lord, in your mercy. For all prayers. 
or places of famine. Lord, in your mercy. For those we know and love, Lord, in thanksgiving. Hear our prayers. In these past weeks, we have had our concerns toward those who have died. And so we pray for the family and friends of Samantha McHugh, who died in Pakistan and is now being memorialized in her home of South Korea. Lord, in your mercy. For the family and friends of Alan Mehta, who began an exceptional ministry in helping refugees make a home in this country. Lord, in your mercy. For the family and friends of Joe Le Cicero, who gave us so much love and wit and wisdom. Lord, in your mercy. For all those we love who have died, remind us, O oh God, that love is eternal. Lord, in thanksgiving. Hear our prayers. I'm looking uh, on our monitor here, checking whether there are any requests from those who worship with us uh, online. Then let us all our spoken and unspoken prayers be summoned in the words of Lord's Prayer. Loving God of the highest authority, may what you stand for be the measure for everything. May the world be shaped as your love will have it. Preserve for us and future generations enough for everyone to live, with fresh air to breathe, clean water to drink, and blue planet to inhabit. May our society be organized fairly without anyone crushed by debt or need. Let the police and courts treat people justly regardless of their class, nationality, or race. With thanks, we now submit ourselves under your bright and loving rule forever. And together we say, so be it.
and dear friends, for ourselves and for our deeply wounded society, let us hear the word of blessing and appropriate it. Take it in and take it with you into our daily lives. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. The Lord shower you with favor and give you peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.